fellas, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Mowers and Blowers. This uh, Toro Pro Line 32 walk behind lawnmower. Um, I just finished uh, fixing the needle and seat issue where there was a leak. It had leaked fuel, overflowing. This was the reason why the guy got rid of the mower in the first place. But it's a pretty easy fix. I did order a new carburetor, but it looks like I did fix the, uh, the needle and seat. So uh, it's been a day. I've been checking it every time I come to the garage, and it is dry. So it's no longer leaking, filling up this area here, and dripping into the crankcase. We changed the oil. This thing runs like a champ. So I was uh, waiting to check it and check it and check it just to make sure that it wasn't leaking before I put the air cleaner back on. So I'm just going to put the air cleaner back on now. Easy to do. Air cleaner's in good shape. The pre-cleaner pre is holding all the dust away. So um, this thing is perfect now. Fix the inner tube. Fix the recoil starter. Fix the fuel leak. Um, welded two holes in the deck. Repainted it. Touched it up a little bit. This thing's ready for sale. I have it up too expensive. I have it up for eighteen seventy-five, sixteen fifty. I'll lower it to twelve hundred, then maybe a thousand. Blah blah blah. I'm not in any hurry. I kind of like it, but I don't like it. I like it, but I don't like it. I don't like the T handles. I I feel like the the, the levers on each side, you know, like the bicycle levers, I feel that's an easier way to control. This one's a little, I don't know, T-handle. I don't really like it very much, so I'm definitely not keeping it, okay? But it does mow very well, though. It has a floating deck. You can adjust the height with these things called Cleven pins. Clevis. Clevis pins. Clevis, you dipstick! Clevis pins. You can, you know... Pull this rod out, slide it into this one to lower it, the bottom one to lift it up higher, you know. So anyway, this one's good to go. What I'm doing today, though, is next in my list of things to do. I have to do what I have to do. And yes, while I would like to work on this and that in the backyard, the red thing in the backyard, I need to address the stuff that I have outstanding and that is this uh, craftsman <laughs> eager one with a Tecumseh engine in it I hate it I got this from my buddy Peter Lombardi over at Long Island mowers and more you can find him on YouTube and Instagram he knows a lot about small engines, especially older tractors. For a young kid like that to understand that, I don't get it. But he likes that. He likes trains. We did this in a trade, Mother Load 16 or something like that. I don't remember. Um, anyway, he sprayed, uh, we have it on film. He sprayed starting fluid in it, pulled it. It runs. It's just that the carburetor's messed up, you know? It was all apart and stuff. You know, Pete, I don't really think you do that many carburetor cleans. You never like doing it. Anyway, uh, this is a very old carburetor. You can tell it's the kind with the black, the big black primer thing, you know. And uh, I'm just going to remove it and see what the uh, story is. Everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. The deck is in great shape. I mean, there's, I mean, they, they made these really, you know, durable back then, you know. So this deck is in great shape. The wheels are in great shape. I hope the self-propulsion works, but um, I have an old I have an old Tecumseh carburetor here. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, if this one doesn't work, I'll try to rebuild this one. That's a decent primer bulb. It's the smaller black one, you know. It's in decent shape. Decent. I also have a bunch of old gaskets. Nut jet gaskets, bulb gaskets, needles, pins and needles, needles and pins. It's a happy man that grins. <laughs> you honeymooner fans, you know what I'm talking about. And I bought a whole bunch of rebuild kits for Tecumsehs. Has seats, needles, gaskets, needles and pins. Pins and needles, needles and pins. 
It's a healthy man that grins. Anyway, so what you're going to need is some rags, torch tip cleaners, the bristle kind and the straight kind, a uh, twisty tie from a bread bag, carburetor, screwdrivers, you know, the one with really thin like that, super small ones, some brushes to clean. I like to use my impact driver instead of uh, screwdrivers. Comes with this, which is the holder of the air filter. This air filter is Dunsky. Rip! It didn't come with the uh, fuel bowl jet nut. I found this one. It's the kind that fits through this hole. There are three different kinds for the Tecumsehs. The thick one, the one that looks like an hourglass, and the super small one. Right? This is the kind that fits this kind with the big black thing like that. If I decide to use this carburetor, I have to go find another one because it, this one won't fit through the hole. It won't fit through the hole! <clears throat> Some carb cleaner. I have carb cleaner, but I like to use this multi-purpose parts cleaner and degreaser from our friends at uh, Lucas Oil Products. Why? Because it doesn't blow up the gaskets like carb cleaner does. Carb cleaner, if you blow all this liquid and it touches the gaskets and stuff, like a balloon, you'll never get that bowl back on there. This one doesn't, so I like to use this. It cleans just, just as well, you know? Uh, I want to show you guys something here. This is the bagger for it, right? This is funny. So this is the bagger for it. The guy drilled two holes in here and put a rope in there so he can pull the bag off? Well, the dumbass had the handle inside the bag. Well, you just gotta, I mean, you know, do these, do these, does, well, I guess not everybody has an education, I guess, you know? Some people drop out of high school, you know? Honestly, you don't need a college degree or work at NASA to figure it out. Watch, it's not the reason. Take this out. Of course, now I got two holes in the bag, you know? And, uh... Loosen the side plastic holders that hold the bag onto the frame. A. Maybe there's more to this than what I'm thinking. I'll take that, take these things off here that hold the frame to the bagger. Step on the bagger and pull this mother Mother's Day bag out and simply slip the handle on the outside. Do Let's all say it together. Do and we talk about doness. That, that guy was committing maximum doeness. He made a handle when the handle was on the inside. Can you believe that? How long did he have this like that? Probably bought it brand new and installed it wrong. And all those years, he had a damn rope to pull this thing when he had the handle brand new on the inside of the bag. That's all right. Not everybody is like a NASA scientist that works on a space shuttle. Like me, I work on space shuttles. Yeah. I mean, of course, I've got two holes here now, but they're minor. Eh? The handle was inside the back the entire time. Unbelievable. Can you, can you can you believe that? Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's what I'm not gonna do. I just I just fixed one part of it. Now I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. I. I can 
find the damn thing. I just need a Phillips, man. Give me a Phillips bit. Damn it. There we go. All right. Just stick the Phillips bit there. Got two bolts there on the intake manifold. It's my Australian one. I'm working on it, guys. Let me get you closer. That's a pretty good angle, huh? You guys like that? Up close and personal. Boom. Boom. That there's the intake manifold. And uh, I'm going to disconnect the... Of course, I don't have it with me. Pull this clamp off the uh, fuel line. This is always a pain to get on to, especially since it's been on here for such a long time, you know. Ooh. That wasn't bad. Kind of hurt the uh, hose to fix it later. Alright, so this is kind of tricky. Um, always know that this is the kind with the throttle bracket. Okay, so it's got a bracket on here with a, with a trottle, right? You put it like this for it to be on uh, for high, and this one's for to be low. Sometimes there's ones where you just there's a, um, uh, a like a metal thing that sticks up like that, and you hook this onto it, and you bend it left and right to do the RPMs. But this is the one with the bracket. I'll try to adhere to the fact that we have going to keep this bracket. So you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take the bracket off instead of taking the linkages off because it's hard to get the linkage out of this hole without taking the bracket off. And if we're going to keep the bracket, you may as well just take the bracket off. You know what I mean? It's uh, 5 16 So there's a guy who wants to buy my Kawasaki FB460V engine that I got off of the keys. Uh, I had it listed for 250. Guy offered me 200. What do you think I should do? Kind of need an engine, you know what I mean? But do I want to put that engine on the uh, four wheel steering yard man? Because it's a pull start with the rope, you know? But this doesn't have a hood anyway, so it doesn't really matter, you know? Of course, the pulley system on the bottom is different, too. I'd have to y try to get that pulley off, and that pulley's a pain in the ass to get off. I know it. And I don't even know if the diameter fits a regular double stack, you know? Anyway, thinking about it. I think the guy just texted me while I'm filming right now. But he's going to have to wait. So, uh, there's no needle in there. fell out. It's not too bad a condition. But I have a feeling that because of this rust over here, build up over there, it's going to be difficult to pull this pin out. And by pulling the pin out, you risk breaking these two posts that hold the float. I've done it many times before. So I'm just going to weasel this a little bit. Maybe I should try some penetrating earl. You know what, I, I, I know I'm going to break it, so I'm going to get some penetrating earl. Oops. From my friends at Lucas Oil. I'm just going to work this back and forth, see if I can loosen it up. Just take the screwdriver. Moved. Yeah, baby. Bowl comes off. Shake it. Good bowl. It's not very dirty, actually. Uh, 
primer doesn't really bounce back. When you blow it up the emulsion, I always want to see if I see this steady stream coming out of the top. I didn't see it. I felt it, but I didn't see it. And the emulsion uh, tube is so thin, I still don't really see it. a torch tip cleaner in here and see if I see it. Of course I can't see it. I'm nearsighted. Still can't see it because it's darky. There we go. Now I see it. You know, this carburetor is not even that dirty. Kind of surprising. Not dirty at all. Almost grabbed the wrong thing. It's a little area here where the Welsh plug is. It has to do the primer. Almost got me. Fuel. Of course, uh, regular carb cleaner, that would blow up that seat. You're going to see that this one probably doesn't. Nice. Hole in here. Comes out the Welsh, see? Another hole on the bottom. I kind of want to see where that comes out of, you know? out of the intake manifold. So look, this is clean now. Need to find a needle. Needle. This part here where the end of this needle comes out has to be pointed inwards. Things like that. Slip it in the hole. Get that pin that was hard to take out and shove it back in again. And I already can feel that this is not going to work. Why? Because it feels like it's too high. See that? Something's wrong with the seat. The seat feels too um, hard and brittle. And me just jamming it and up and down like this, I guarantee you it'll probably be trashed. Better to find out this way than when you put it all together again, you know? So this doesn't feel right. See? It's popping up too much. This bowl needs to be lower. Like, this bowl needs to be like this. And no, not parallel, actually lower, like that. That's just how tecumsehs are. So this is way too, uh, 
there's something wrong with the seat. So I'm going to replace the seat. And getting that little seat out is a pain in the ass. One of my uh, subscribers, Scott Keller, tells me, oh, just blow compressed air in here and it'll fly out. Well, what the hell kind of seat is that if a compressed air can blow it out? Crazy talk! Yep. The seat looks really puffy, you know what I mean? Puffy. The hole, you can barely, there's barely a hole. You can barely blow in there either. I'm going to get that seat out. Just jabbing a screw in there, a wood screw. Just screwing it in there so it gets a hold of the, uh, the seat. Just yank it out. You are guaranteeing to trash that seat, though. Guaranteed. Sometimes it works. There we go. Yeah, it's trashed, man. It's all shredded. Shredded to bits. Well, at least we got the seat out. <laughs> eh? Yes, I've been watching Pug One again. gotten better. Tomuchi's back. Countryman. I had to go and uh, scoop some poo from the backyard because my son, who's going off to college, doesn't want to do it. Can you believe that? Entitlement. So there was still some residual rubber in there and I used a really thin screwdriver and got it out. So that's pretty clean. Motion tube's clean. That's pretty clean. So I'm going to throw a new seat in there. My kit. There's a little seat there. Right? See the part with the groove? That goes down. It has to be flat on the outside. See how much bigger that hole is? I'm just going to... Place it like that. Then you can get a drill bit or something. And just have this little uh, primer hose there from the other one. Just make sure you put it in slowly. All the way in without flipping it or having it on its side. Perfect. There we go. See that? Not popped up anymore, right? And that's actually perfect. Let's see if it works though. Okay, so when now it's hanging, I should be able to blow. And I can. Now that it's upside down, you have to mimic that it's um, filled with fuel. And you can't. So I think that worked. Right now I'm going to um, clean this area here and prepare it for a gasket. There's the bowl. It has a lot of crud in it. do this to make a nice tight seal 
just go around it. This is the spare jet bowl nut that I found that I know fits this. It has a small little hole right there. Just make sure it's clear. And it is. Make sure we'll blow some carp cleaner in here. find the gasket for that bowl. So in my rebuild kits they come with bowl gaskets, right? But I find that they're all too thin and they won't fit the bowl. Too thin. This one might be better but it's still too thin. So I have old ones that came off of these carburetors that uh, were kind of dry and brittle. Well I've been soaking like 10 of them inside my old oil and gas mixture. It's been sitting there for a few days, so this one's pretty good. This one's almost like new. Rubbery, clean, complete, not brittle or nothing, or anything. So I'm going to try this one. Nice and tight. Really tight, actually. Too tight. All right, that's nice thick gasket there. Because of the pivot right here, right? There's a droop in this bowl. This line here, line it up with that can't just go like that anywhere. It has to be like this. KK? Hmm. That doesn't seem like it's a... See? See how that is? It's too, uh, too easy to move around. I think that'll leak. Oh, I'll try it. I need to find a gasket for this one. Man, there's so many. So many things to do. Henry, you're spending a lot of time on this. Yeah, well, you got to do right, don't you? Half inch wrench. Now it's on pretty tight. So now it's down. You can blow air, which means that gas will flow. When it's upside down, you can't blow. So it shouldn't leak, but to come to carbs, leak all the time. I hate them. Hate them. Uh. There we go, there we go. Put the bracket back on. Just 
want to try to see where it was before because you can actually adjust the RPMs this way. So we'll just put it in the middle for now and adjust accordingly. I hate the pumps. It's really compact in there. I mean, really tight. I'm not happy with it. All right. Well, only one way to find out. So I'm gonna try to put some gas in it and start it. Just to see. I don't have good confidence. I mean, even though we did everything right and it's pretty clean, Tecumseh's just are so unpredictable. I hate them. I guarantee you it's going to leak. So the bracket was on a little tight. I couldn't move the, uh, the governor back and forth. So this thing was on too tight, so I just lifted it up. Now it's free and loose. And... Believe it, I just filled it with gas, and believe it or not, I feel some primer. Stick your pinky in here like that, and feel it's wet. There's about uh, half of oil that'll work. Let's just pull it and see what happens.
leak either. You know what it is? I think the governor needs to be adjusted because uh, it's not um, there's not enough throttle to it. Nice. I just adjusted the governor a little bit. Just turned it like a smidgen. Just basically rebuilt the carburetor and fixed that bag. And this is good to go. I'm going to take some pictures of it. Just put the finishing touches on it. Got a brand new filter here that I got from my friends over at ProPartsDirect.net. Just your uh, typical cylindrical air filter for the Tecumseh engines. It's part 35066. Tecumseh. Original part. Stick it in here. Actually, it's better that you first stick it here and slip this over if you can. Cross the word is right there. And there you go. Complete. I'm still going to have to mess with that throttle thing. But, starts and runs, which I... So can you believe it? I took that uh, bracket thing all apart again, and it turns out I didn't stick that uh, governor linkage into the right throttle hole. You know, there's three holes on the top of that thing, you know? I had it in the wrong hole. Can you believe that? I got it in the wrong hole. this thing runs pretty good anyway uh, make sure you get in the right hole guys see you guys later so it's a pretty decent mower actually in good shape except it's missing a hubcap so much better now. So, 
while I didn't really want to, I just sold my uh, Kawasaki FB460V engine from that Keys Walk Behind Lawnmower. But how can I say no to $200? $200 for the engine. I was going to put that engine in uh, in my um, in the four-wheel steering thing, but honestly, I didn't really like the fact that it was a pull start. You know what I mean? And not only that, the pulleys may not fit. So $200, $200. I'll Over time, the belts get a little stretched. And so as I engage my T-bar... A lot of just free space goes until I actually feel tension on the belt to engage the drive. So there's like, I feel like almost in two inches of play until it actually touches the belt. So this also, the right side feels like there's even more play than the left side. So I think the belt stretching has... Uh, it's not even, you know. I feel like I can, I can push it down on the right more than the left, you know. And so that's what probably why I don't like it is because it was kind of, you know, wobbly to control. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out this pin. It's a cotter pin. Just like that, right? Pull this out. left and plug it back in here again and see so I'm pushing it now and it's better you know still some play though but I don't want it to like run and just move without pushing it down, you know, so I'm just going to try an inch for now, and I'm going to do it on the other side too, just to see if this all works out well. Right. So I just did it. I did a little bit more on the right side than the left side. I'm going to start her up and see. Run. Choke.
better, but I still don't like it. Some nut will buy it. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on my next project. Have a great day.